Before we begin, three messages. So, you've taken some of the advice that has come from Untethered.tv guests, built an app, and now you're turning your attention to generating some hard-earned revenue. Then you should be looking at Pontiflex app leads. Some of your peers who are using app leads are earning CPMs 100 times the industry average. And if you need any other reasons to start, I'll give you two more. You can run sign-up ads from top brands, the ones that you recognize, and it won't take your precious users out of your app. Go to appleads.com, that's A-P-P-L-E-A-D-S.com to sign up. When my company needed to develop a key mobile product, one that I was counting on as a new source of revenue, I knew exactly who to turn to, Macadamian. They delivered on time with incredible attention to detail, and I was able to get product into customers' hands faster than I ever thought possible. I've personally known them for 10 years, and they do make great products even better. Check them out at www.macadamian.com. Here's a riddle. How do you build native cross-platform mobile applications quickly without having to rewrite code and hire consultants at a huge cost? Titanium from AppCelerator. Called the easy button for mobile application development, it allows you to focus more on what's important, getting product out the door. Join the more than 1.5 million active developers who have created over 13,000 apps at www.accelerator.com. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Untether.tv, where we have casual conversations with mobile rock stars. I am your host, Rob Woodbridge. And I am joined today from another person from Ottawa, another technology mobile entrepreneur from the great city of Ottawa, the city that I live in. And I'm so fills me with great pride when I, I am able to talk to not only just a Canadian, but somebody who's literally right around the corner for me. And this always happens where we have the worst connection in terms of Internet when we're right around the corner to each other. I have with me I have with me Arash Mahin, who is uh, one of the founders of a company called Squawk Me. And um, I, I'm going to just do my best to give a little bit of description about what this is. If, if you, the way they describe it on the website is if you take Foursquare and you combine it with YouTube, you've got, you've got Squawk Me, which is basically location-based video snippets. So wherever I'm standing, I take a video, it's, it's geotagged, and it's uploaded to the cloud, and everybody can see it and uh, participate. And there's a thousand and one different uses for this, and I'm really interested to hear about uh, all of them throughout this nine-hour interview with Arash because he is from Ottawa, I've got all the time in the world for anybody who's from my hometown. Arash, thank you so much for coming onto Untether.tv and sharing your story. Man, welcome. Thank you for having me, Rob. Again, my pleasure. Ottawa, well, I don't know what it is. We've got this nascent mobile industry. We're starting to come around. We're starting to come around. Good combination of engineer talent and I think sales and marketing, ingenuity and innovation. So why don't we talk about what you are doing at Squawk Me? Why don't you do a little bit better of a job of describing it than I just did? Uh, Actually, um, you, you gave the best <laughs> introduction. Um, yeah, so Squawk Me is a um, location-based video sharing app. Um, that uh, kind of what we were what we were targeting is trying to give um, a viewer more than one perspective of a specific event that's going on. Um, so you can look at it as citizen journalism, or um, you know, just you're you're out on Canada Day and you want to see what the crowd's like before attending. Um, you can get you know more than one view or perspective on that on that specific event. Um, so it's we, we've tried to keep it as simple as possible and that's kind of where we're going with it. It, it, it makes sense because uh, you know a lot of people are capturing this stuff and, and for a long time it really didn't wasn't easy to get off of the phone wasn't uh, I mean you know we've gone you know three years ago we weren't able to capture this stuff on the phone and once we did uh, once we were able to do that, it just stayed on the phone because it was such a pain to actually get any of the photos or video off. Um, you know, what was the reason now to to launch this or to come up with this idea? What was the what was the reasoning behind the idea? Um, well, you know, being in the being in the IT space um, and seeing how the uh, the basically mobile platform is evolving. I mean, people are using more more of their mobile phones than they're using any other devices. Yeah. And, um, you know, you have, so taking that in, in, in factor and then seeing what YouTube, millions of people are uploading videos on a, on a daily basis and tying that into hundreds of thousands of people are actually checking in at, 
you know, random locations and sharing it with their social graph, you know, from, you know, their family and friends to complete strangers and trying to amalgamate those two um, to come up with um, Squawk Me, which is, you know, essentially you, you said it right, it's four squares meets, you know, YouTube. So, I, I mean, what, what's your history? I mean, yeah, you come from it from an IT background, obviously, or a technology background, but you know, have you been in the mobile space for a long time? Is this is this just something an opportunity that you looked at and said, you know, there's a gap? I mean, what was where um, does it come from? Well, my background's predominantly been on um, you know optimizing video, online video, um, okay. and we've been doing that for 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 some time now. So it was it was a natural type of an evolution um, to to go from that to optimizing it for different mobile platforms and um, you know having different different components added into it. Um, so, so is it? Uh, so, what was it? The the appeal? You know, you spent so much time on mobile web, or or, or not mobile web. Sorry, uh, video for web um, and optimizing for that. I mean, w was it a natural transition over? I mean, I, I don't think that video for the web has seen its end of life yet. Um, it just seems to accelerate and sell accelerate. What was the appeal of the mobile space? Um, I think it was number one the the growth. Um, and it was, you know, uh, a chance to to get into the game earlier on again. It's I saw the mobile space as being like what the internet was in ninety eight, ninety, you know, ninety seven, ninety eight, whereas all those websites were, you know, being redone again for what you were doing back then. Yeah. So that was that was a natural traction that that we had to get into the space and, you know, grow from there. Well, I mean, I, we see it. There's a lot of parallels, a lot of parallels between the web and and uh, and mobile. The web ten years or twelve years ago, and the mobile and mobile today, That's drastically right. different, but uh, you know, different impact. But certainly, we're seeing that in the, in the marketplace now. So, you you built this platform for for the iPhone. Talk about the product for a second. Um, when did you launch this? Um, well, we had been um, we had been building it for about six months. And the the reason why we we actually went for the iPhone platform was back then um, a, a large number of um, mobile users were actually um, or smartphone mobile users were actually being activated on the iOS um, platform. Yeah. Um, now that's drastically changed. Now you have a huge shift in uh, you know Android devices, and um, <clears throat> so that's why we originally actually you know developed this for the iPhone. And then soon after, realized that oh, okay, wait, <laughs> we have to we have to get out an Android app as well, um, rather quickly. So um, we moved forward with that. With that. Um. So it's a, it's a big. I mean, it's a big challenge, right? Uh, a small company trying to build for all these multiple platforms. Uh, you know, we were around during the the internet days, during the the web days, when it was like you know you had to build for Netscape and IE, and that was the big challenge, right? The multiple browsers, two of them. Who cares compared to the diversity of uh, handsets and the complexity each brings, you know, from iPhone, which is a great development environment, to, to Android, which is an okay development environment, to BlackBerry, which is a terrible development environment. <laughs> right? So most most entrepreneurs and most technology companies in the mobile space start with the easiest first, and then kind of progressively get into the most difficult one, which is ultimately BlackBerry yeah. at this point. Is that that's the the, the transition that you you guys are have taken? Yeah, we we actually yeah being as you said, I mean the iPhone being one of the easiest developing platforms because you're only de developing for a you know select three or four different units. You're dealing with one you know screen size versus the Android, which is a little more complex. You have more hardware. You know, as in they said in Google I/O, they have 312 different devices. So there's all sorts of resolution hardware yeah. um, aspects, and the BlackBerry is just a completely different ball game because. You have to, you know, design something different for the playbook, something different for, you know, each unit. So, um, the uh, the BlackBerry I see as being a bit of a challenge, but the uh, Android and iPhone have been uh, rather easy so far. So, it's, yeah, well, you know, yeah, the, it's like split personalities though when you when you get into the to the mindset of the development side. Um, when when you uh, uh, you start with the iPhone. Because uh, obviously it's a it's it's an easy market because it's centralized and as you said it's you know uh, iOS is iOS right mm -hmm. and there might be some variations between versions of it but ultimately it's it's one it's one operating system even across the tablet market as well um, uh, so you, you said that you took six months to develop this when did you actually put this up you've just gone through an extensive beta process obviously um, 
And when did you put this up on uh, onto uh, the App Store? Um, we put it about a month ago, um, and you know, to clarify, we're still kind of in the beta state. Yeah. Um, Always in beta. Right? Uh, that's, yeah. that's a great thing about digital products. <laughs> um, and um, so, the way we we've, we've chosen to propagate this is while we were actually building this app, we were um, ramping up several large Twitter accounts and a huge following that that was coming with it. So we were actually doing one-off testing with a select few. Okay. Um, and now that, that we have the app out we're, and the Android app is coming out um, late this week, we're just throttling that up to, um, to get to, hopefully, <laughs> to get to uh, bigger sizes. So, what, so uh, you know, I talked to uh, Baskar Roy, who is the uh, co-founder or founder of, of uh, Quick uh, Mobile, yeah. right, which is a... Uh, they do live streaming, so they're not archive. They do archive it, but they're doing live streaming, just like uh, Justin TV or uh, UStream. And uh, he said that uh, the biggest challenge for them, you know, wasn't so much the technology. Uh, it was the engineering process of optimizing video over mobile. It was the big challenge. An engineer loves that big challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and then he quickly realized that as they were growing in, in numbers, um, you know, that one server in the corner, kind of an, an IKEA rack, wasn't going to cut it when they started to explode into numbers. The way that you look at what you're doing is that, I mean, uh, how, how do you, how are you gonna be able to accommodate for this? I mean, does your technology, why don't you walk us through what your technology does? So when, when I start recording and mm -hmm. then I submit it, it obviously gets sent up to a server, it's in the cloud somewhere. So mm -hmm. walk us through that. So um, basically when you're using um, one of, one platform, either iOS or Android, um, the second you submit a video, it gets tagged to your exact ge geolocation, yep. um, and then it gets uploaded to the server, um, which is, you know, we have it propagated. But um, So what it does from that point on is, in real time, it actually encodes different, um, different types of video, so it could be s played back from other units that are non- iPhone or so you can play it back from Symbian OS and Blackberry you, you those those units just can't provide content at the at the current time right but you can still play the content back from from those um, and then that that video in the background is meta tagged and um, and is put into a timeline of events that's going on so let's say for future reference if you want to go back and see you know what was going on you know, two weeks from now and you know, downtown or what happened in Vancouver with the Canucks, you can go back and see what the atmosphere was like at that time. So that's kind of how, and yeah, it, it is, it will be a challenge. Now, we're not doing any, any live streaming. We found out that um, live streaming and having a latency of five to ten seconds doesn't really matter for the, um, for the user. So it doesn't it doesn't really do anything on the user experience side. Um, it just puts a huge amount of stress on your servers. Right. So, right. Um, so we're not doing any kind of live streaming, um, but our our latency factors are low, and we have optimized all our video and compressed it properly. So it, there's no time that there's no lag time basically. And even when it comes to uh, um, optimizing the video, its size, right? That's one of the biggest concerns, obviously, with these Canadians who don't have unlimited uh, data uh, data plans uh, on their mobile device. So are, are you doing something to crunch the size down before it gets up, it's sent up the pipe, or is it just kind of video is video? Um, well, we can't do anything on the, on the phone side of things yeah. because yeah. our hands are tied. Um, but the second we have the video, that means it's being uploaded to us. Um, we adjust the bit rate. Um, so we do a little, you know, tweak here as a file. We do limit limit the size of these videos. Okay. So, um, okay. um, yeah, so like in that's, size or, or in length? Like how how long are the video clips that you're allowed to upload? Well, um, they 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 vary. Like we we initially had it at 15 seconds. So. Um, but we had a couple of you know users. We had a lot of feedback saying, "Yeah, 15 seconds is a, is not enough." And you know, I've seen a lot of research out there that saying 15 seconds is enough. But in practicality, when when you're trying to use an app, and this is you know you're trying to capture an event, you don't know what's going to be you know going on in that event. It could be at any given interval of that event. So um, we just didn't put a limit on it. But we allowed the user on the um, specifically on the iPhone app to cut and crop um, the exact 
section they want to upload. Okay. Um, so that's kind of how people. Well, you know, one of the I think one of the biggest uh, the biggest the most important piece of capturing video is that spontaneity, right? Um, you know, video is not like photos where, uh, you know, you're, you're capturing, it's a still image, you're going to take 30 photos and upload them because they're small enough to be able to upload. I mean, uh, I've seen a lot of very poorly done videos. Um, none of them coming from untether.tv, I'll have you. None of them coming from this show. Um, but I, I have seen some, you, you, know, you know, videos that don't have a pulse or some videos that don't have any emotion, right? They, they're just 15 or 30 second streams. And uh, I mean, that's the big challenge with video, isn't it? Because you, you do want to capture something, um, but you also want to make sure that you limit the length of that video. Did you run into that kind of, you know, what's the right balance? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, yeah, when it comes to capture, we don't, we don't want people to, um, you know, someone once said to me, it's, it's really easy to, to use Twitter because when you're typing 140 characters, you have the time to, you know, the backspace button is really handy because you have the time to formulate your thought Absolutely. And, and, you know, put it online where you, where you want it. Versus video is, is really different. You have to, you don't have the time to, you know, formulate something you want to say or you just got to, you know, say it. So we, we like to, you know, we like to think of it as two ways. So it's, Visual serendipity is kind of what the the yeah. thing we're going after is you know capturing the moment or um, so yeah that's but uh, yeah I mean I, I completely understand and um, you know I was at a uh, a tee ball game for one of my sons or for both of my sons uh, on the weekend and uh, I mean I captured some what I would consider very exciting um, video but to everybody who's watched it it's not so exciting. So video is really in the eye of the beholder. What you're capturing is at that moment something emotional, something that you're reacting to, something that you want to capture. Um, but to other people, it, it might not be as exciting. What do you hope that people begin capturing? You know, what, what's your hope for this? Is that it blankets a city so you get a perspective from everything, or is it really driven by a, a you know event driven, where you're at a concert or a, an event that you want to uh, you want to get multiple perspectives from? Yeah, I think it's more, you know, trend slash event driven type of a um, kind we're going after where, yeah, or for example, what, what went on in Egypt, you know, that's, that's a big thing that you can, or what's going on in Libya. Um, these are things that you can, you know, capture on and uh, people are using that. The, uh, one of the, one of the new features with our um, 2.0 and Android app is even though if you don't have internet, uh, a solid internet connection, it actually stores it locate locally on your phone with your um, geo coordinates and then the second you do have some sort of a Wi-Fi or 3G or 2G or edge connection it slowly uploads um, the uh, the video yeah so going back to your question I think it is um, it is a um, a folk it's a um, event centric type yeah. of a type of an app well, rather than just a, a shooting I've mentioned this uh, um, uh, on a few other different episodes around um, uh, Obama's inauguration about how CNN did this brilliant thing, which was wherever you are, if you're on the grounds at the inauguration, take a photo when Obama puts his hand on the Bible and puts his other hand up in the air. Take a photo and then submit that photo. And it captured this massive event that was celebrated by, I think, the world. Um, and it really does, uh, you know, it evokes an emotion. So I, I picture the same thing happening with what you with with Squawk Me uh, around something like that says take your video about that moment and you could you could compile everything that's going on at that moment from multiple vantage points is that I mean does that give you goosebumps yeah it does not, not only can you compile what's going on on that but you can also archive it so you know future people you, you they can see what's going on at you know at a later date so i, I to me that that like, you know, when I think about uh, um, history, um, like, uh, boy, we could have used something like this in, uh, you know, in, uh, in 63, uh, you know, the, the uh, Zapruder films could have been a little bit clearer. They could have had every angle, right? Um, so but when, I, when I think about technology like this, I think that that's really what it, it really is. On any street corner, in any part of the world, I can see what may have transpired there, what happened at that spot. Um, or 
I can be at a Bruce Springsteen show and uh, and you know be up in the nosebleeds, but still be able to participate as a result of the people that are down there doing or you know uh, filming th their perspectives of this. And and um, pretty soon, every piece of everybody's lives will be documented in one way, shape, or form, and you can tune into the channel of you, right? Um, That's right. Some people may want to, some people may not, but uh, um, so let's talk about this technology. Uh, you, you know, you've got to obviously build this up. You're, you're, you're rolling out versions, but then that server infrastructure, you know, as uh, Bascar said, you still have to build this server infrastructure to be able to handle this kind of stuff. So how, how do you do that? Do you balance like 37 signals says don't build until you need to, uh, you know, people say, well, you don't want to, you want to build so you don't fail when, when you start to gain traction. How do you, how are you guys approaching this? Cause it's a big problem or it could be a big issue. Absolutely. Um, you know, thus far, it's it's been a completely uh, we we bootstrap this entire um, operation. Um, we are going after um, you know, just like you said, in order to expand, you need some capital to do so. So we are um, we are looking for capital, predominantly in you know the um, Palo Alto region, New York, um, and there's you know quite a bit of interest in this space. Um, being, you know, some of the other guys that are in the space have kind of validated yeah. the entire. We we all started out at the same, you know, within within a couple of days apart, actually. Um, so they they're doing nothing but validating the space, and it's it's an exciting time to to. So I think I think raising money would probably be, um, you know, the best <laughs> the best thing to do to to move forward. I mean, yeah, it's like adding gasoline to the fire, right? So you're proving the concept right now. Um, something like this doesn't scale well organically um, because it's a free it's free right that's right and and so your business model is obviously to monetize the stream yeah um, so talk about that a little bit is it do you have that flushed out or is it something that you're working on um, well you know I don't really say that they have um, this this portion of it flushed out and they have it exactly to, you know, they focused on, they know exactly what it is. But, I mean, we've been looking at, you know, some of the statistics. So what we offer is basically a location-based um, product. Yep. Um, and going on that, you know, spending on location-based, you know, mobile ads in the U.S. this year was $750 million. It's, you know, going to be around $6 billion in 2015. Um, so, you know, around engaging people exactly at their location and having advertisers, you know, display something to their liking at that precise location. So it's, it's you know, it's geo-targeted advertising. But um, now this can also be endorsed with, with the Squawk Me app. It can also be endorsed by testimonials. So every time you, you squawk something, you have the option of propagating it through your social graph. So all your friends are, you know, looking at your, you're having a Coke at, you know, a particular location or you're at a Starbucks. So you're actually endorsing yep. you're you're endorsing that product. Here. It's it's a live testimonial for for these brands. So um, that that's really that's really interesting, Araj, because uh, it's kind of like uh, how do you how do you find somebody to pay for that? Uh, because I'm sitting in Starbucks and I want to endorse this latte or this frappuccino or something to that extent or a Coke. Um, uh, you know. You got to put some kind of analytics around the impact of me drinking that Coke on film or, or being at Starbucks. Um, so, is there is there an analytics piece to this that you're looking at, or or is it um, just location that you're 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 coveting? Well, um, we have yeah. For, for the time being, it's just location, mm -hmm. and it's um, and it's basically user endorsed type of yeah. products. Um, just like you know the the Foursquare model, right? Um, but um, you know that we do have a couple of things in our back pockets for how to how to capitalize um, on that on that exact um, you know that model. So yeah, you know, uh, yeah, there's a huge opportunity. I mean, you know, when you start to talk about uh, how Foursquare has has added that game element to to location, all of a sudden you can you can see the same thing with the video. Um, and so I, there is that. I think that there's obviously um, location-aware advertisements mm -hmm. on on the at the location. Mm -hmm. I think that there's even because you tie in. I think you, you tie in so well with Facebook. Um, 
then there's also an opportunity to uh, you know tie, tap into as you said your your social graph um, and uh, push advertisements based on your location to them right so even if I don't explicitly say I'm in Starbucks mm -hmm. you know implicitly you've got the location That's uh, you know right. I, yeah. You can say, hey, uh, you know, your friend signed, you know, your friend sent this video from Starbucks. Click here, and you'll get ten percent off, or whatever that might be, right? That's right. That's and right. then, and then you've also got the flip side, which is you can run campaigns with the brands, right? That's right. So, so um, yeah, campaigns. I mean, there's there's a litany of different different uh, approaches. You can, uh, you know, run run something saying that every everyone who endorses or you know says something good about your product, because ultimately, at the end of the day, if I you know, buy a, a Mac product and turn around to my, and my friend asks me, hey, what, what's the best type of laptop or what, what should I get? I mean, the chances of my friend listening to what I have to say are higher than a random stranger, right? right. So um, that, that being said, I think it's still, I mean, the model is still in the works, but we have to, I think there's a lot of fine tuning that has to, has to go on before we can solidify something. <laughs> well, you're, you're right, but you know, one of the great things about location is that um, there are many ways to turn that into revenue, right? So it, picking the right space is as important as picking the right revenue model. And picking the right revenue model is really about seeing what sticks or seeing what actually generates revenue. And, and you know, what you're doing will allow you to kind of beta test your revenue model, won't it? That's right. Um, I mean, there's, there's a also, we don't want to... <clears throat> We don't want to be intrusive at the same time because I mean some of these ads, uh, you know, big big ad companies can be rather intrusive, and so we want to stay out of out of that kind of um, way. We want we want push it towards more of your social graph endorsing a product rather than us pushing a, a, an exact product to that location. Um, that's a preferred model, but um, um, so that's yeah. It's it's funny because I see a lot of companies that. Um, we're off on a tangent here, but that's fine. Um, when, when you start to think about location and uh, and turning that into a revenue stream, I see a lot of companies say, okay, well, we'll just integrate, you know, Groupon's stream. So, you know, you check into Starbucks and it'll check around and see what, you know, what Groupon uh, now coupons are available. So, you know, maybe there's a Chinese restaurant across the street that's giving you 50% off if you go in there now. Um, but the likelihood that that really attracts people, I would say, is fairly low because it's intrusive and um, who said I was in the mood for Chinese, right? I haven't identified. It just because I'm here doesn't mean I want that deal, right? That's right. So that's what you've got to you're very smart to, to, you know, to guard against that. Um, yeah. Unless, you know, there's something in my profile that says I love Chinese food and send me any deal that has Chinese food, right? Um, that's right. When I'm in that proximity. So go back to the, to the uh, investment side. Mm -hmm. Add fuel to this because you need it to grow. Uh, this is this is clearly a, a download and use uh, game, isn't it? Did you catch that? Yeah, so yeah, we're having, obviously there's there's a bandwidth issues. Um, I said that there's, you know, back to the, rev, to the VC or the investment side, this is obviously a, a download. You're trying to get as many downloads and as many people using this as possible. That's really the game here for you guys, isn't it? That's right. Um, and I think I mean, once you have it, once you get a little bit of momentum within within a certain group, running some you know promotional promotional or contests, yeah. something along those lines, it, it theoretically should um, to to fuel itself. Now that's very you know, it's very naive of me to say something like that, but um, it's okay. We won't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you know, we, we've seen the initial traction and we've seen that people do actually, in fact, um, you know, use this. And this, this is a great model. It, it'll work great in, in scale whereby, you know, you're, you're at home behind a PC and you just want, you know, to see what's going on. You can log on to the site and, you know, instantly on, our, on, our, on the map, see what's going on anywhere in the world yep. at that specific time. So... Um, it's it's very complementary to a lot of the technology that's out there. So, you know, when when you start to see that happening, um, um, uh, Bo Hao, who is a co-founder of uh, Local Mind, it's actually a San Diego-based company that is being incubated in Montreal. Um, the company's called Local Mind, 
has a different uh, approach, but you guys are very complimentary when this is, you know, theirs is you reach out and touch somebody who's standing in the bar that you or the place you want to go to and ask them a, a question. Yours is, well, yep. just take a look at the video, right? I mean, yep. it, it, I, I, like, I like both approaches. VCs. So you said I, I, you are hunting for VCs in Silicon Valley, New York. Yeah, what about predominantly in, in the state, predominantly in the in the United States. Yeah. Um, uh, we've seen traction from different different places as as well as Europe as well for um, for this kind of. Uh, but yeah, I I don't know. We haven't really looked in our own backyard. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, so VC, we, we're hunting for VCs in, in, in the U.S. and How are you doing that? That's I can say. <laughs> for the yeah. How, but, I mean, are you, are you uh, doing pitches? Are you just cold calling? Are you sending them business plans? Without, without getting into detail about who you're talking to, but mm -hmm. is it, I mean, tangible? Is it, are you just li literally knocking down doors? Um, <laughs> no, I don't. I wouldn't say we're knocking down doors, but I'd say we're taking a more of a scientific approach to to who's invested in the space before um, and trying to find ways to to getting to them. Um, normally, an exec summary is is preferred method. If they if they like the exec summary, they'll probably pick up the phone and call, like we've yeah. seen in many cases, um, and they go through piles of them. So having the having the right connections down there is also also a key factor. Um, to to getting into some of these VC guys, um, we're you know in terms of in terms of funding, we're we're not quite certain if we want to go VC or angel round, but um, you know that's kind of up in the air for, for the company. Yeah. But um, but yeah, there's yeah, definitely one of the potentials. So. Well, yeah, I think that that's you know I, I mean a strategy might be to go you know you're 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 tackling the guys who have invested in the space or shown interest in the space. Um, so that whole other side that of the guys who who have missed investing in those original companies or the companies that are out there, and they're clamoring now to find a company to invest in, right? So, uh, you know, different approaches. But, uh, you know, I think that the, this is now a ripe opportunity for investment, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. I mean, I mean, if you, um, sorry, did, did you yeah, catch so that? Just right? repeat that last part. Yeah. Uh, so if you if you look at what the uh, market was about two years ago, it probably it, it was completely flatlined. You know, people weren't even even in in Silicon Valley, they weren't interested in investing. And then you know something happened where you got these massive valuations for companies like Facebook and you know currently LinkedIn and at multiples you know LinkedIn multiple of thirty. You know some of these things that were unheard of that are backed with. With funding, and so these investors, most of these investors, don't want to miss the next opportunity to, you know, get involved with a company, and you know, get a thirty-time multiple out of, out of their investment. So, um, yeah, so we that that's kind of a it's it really is a good time to, to um, to go after investment. Um, so what now? So what what do you think this is? I mean, put put on your kind of uh, future gazing hat for a second here as we go through this. Is that you're funded, you're growing, this company's accelerating, video is everywhere. Um, you, you've figured out how to how to turn this into some revenue, um, and then, I mean, where does this industry go? So it's one thing to collect all this and put metrics. Where does it go? Um, that's that's a very very difficult question uh, to answer and. You know, I don't, I don't know exactly where where it'll go. Um, in terms of where do you but, hope it goes? Um, I, it's it's really difficult to say. I don't know if I don't know if anyone anyone can exactly you know pinpoint. There's it can it can go so many different ways. It could go um, you know a way in which uh, we've we've seen the natural evolution. I mean, I used to walk around with a laptop all the time. Now I walk around with a tablet. Um, and, you know, I walk around with a cell phone. It's, it just, it's completely, you know, so it could be that everyone's, you know, their, their source of entertainment would be sitting behind and seeing what's going on around them and interacting with, with what's going on around them virtually. Um, um, 
it could i mean that's one of one of the things that that could be but you know in all honesty i can't i can't exactly give you a a focused approach to where this You know, what I think is, is very interesting about what this space, especially location-based video, um, and we touched on this earlier, is is that citizen journal aspect, of, journalist aspect of this, where, um, you know, uh, David Seitman Garland, who is a uh, videographer, he's a host of a web show, he used to be a host on NBC, um, had his own show, uh, you know, just unloaded $20,000 worth of equipment that he used to carry around with him to film episodes and now he does the same thing from a you know a macbook pro or an ipad or an iphone um and a good mic ultimately and some great software and uh you know for for less than a thousand dollars he can he can equip himself fairly well so do you like a, there, there may be a time where you, you see it on cnn now where there's you know um there's crowdsourced content that they're saying send it to us if you see something or you know this disaster in Japan. I mean, how many how many uh, videos came out of that as a direct result? Um, you know, of of it was we had we had wall or you know coast to coast, country to country coverage of, of what was going on there um, by guys like you and me with our with our uh, with our iPhones. And uh, you, you you know how much is that going to play? Because we haven't really started that. Sorry, I just want to make sure you got the last part of that. Um, we haven't really seen the beginning yeah. of this from you know from a mass population perspective. That's got to play into your into your thinking as as you're building this product out. Absolutely, uh, citizen journalism is one of the uh, you know first things that we we kind of approached when it came to you know building out this model. Um, and you know we were we were actually building this as. The um, the tragedy in, in Japan was was actually happening the natural disaster um, so that was the natural natural evolution I think that will be the natural evolution of what what's you know to come of Squawk Me um, and yeah so I think I think that's pretty <laughs> pretty accurate to say it's pretty amazing I mean what we're living in because. Uh, it's no longer a bubble, and um, and I'm not talking about a uh, you know um, an economic bubble, um, but it, you you you're much more exposed. You know, companies uh, and applications like Instagram uh, give you an immediate view into other countries that you may never have. Not just countries, not monuments, but ways of life, right? Like you you get a glimpse into somebody taking a subway in Tokyo, right? Um, and and uh, you know it's shrinking this planet even more, and, and the things that you guys are doing uh, contribute to that, so that you know everything becomes a real uh, life's lesson. Like you know, in education, you can you can pull in you know a video feed from somewhere you know in a different country, and and watch as you know the streets of Delhi are traversed, right, or something to that extent, and that. That's got to be. I mean, you're contributing to that voice, which is very, very cool. Uh, you got to be proud of what you guys are doing there, Arash. Thank you very much. <laughs> I am. <laughs> so, uh, last question about this is that um, talk about how um, how this e e evolves. So you uh, you've you've got uh, the iPhone version that's out there. Version two is going to come out relatively soon. You've submitted that. Um, yeah. The Android platform will come out. At, uh, you know, a week after or so. Is that what you said? Um, yeah, I think we we have the Android platform coming out initially, and then the uh, two build because it takes a, a you know a little while for the Apple yeah. Store to uh, approve. <laughs> and then it's BlackBerry. Yes, then we're going to um, hit BlackBerry, um, and the the biggest reason for that is because um, a lot of news reporters actually um, are carrying around BlackBerry units yeah. rather than you know iPhone and Android. So um, we're you know, going after that that niche because simply because we want to promote people with you know with journalists them, themselves starting it off. So that, that's a that's a neat market to go after. Obviously, uh, the, the the journalist. Um, and I saw that you had a local guy, uh, Paul Brent, uh, using it uh, from your office and and reporting. That's a great endorsement when when you start to see those guys using it. I would say. Yeah, and uh, you know when 
when Paul was here, he said, you know, if, if this ever comes out for the BlackBerry, <laughs> let me know. I'm, I'll start using it. So, nice. um, so there, yeah, there's definitely some, some traction in that arena as well, that, that specific vertical. So. so how do people find out more? They want to download this. They can, they can do it from uh, App Store. Uh, they can do it from the App Store. They can go directly to our, to our website um, and, and download the app. And the Android app will also be available there to download. Um, the neat thing about the website is there's also a view map feature, which will allow you to view all the squawks that are going on um, around the world. So you can literally sit there. It's, it's you know, some, some call it, um, it's like chewing gum for your brain. <laughs> you can just sit there and just, you know, all day long try to find out what's going on and... Um, yeah, so our website would, would be the best. Uh, and that's at uh, squawkme.com, S-Q-U-A-W-K-M-E.com, right? Yeah, or shortened version would be S-Q-W-K.M-E. Okay, S-Q-W-K.M-E. Um, well, Arash, I really appreciate you you coming on and, and, and walking us through this, uh, through Squawk, uh, Squawk Me. Um the uh, you know, and as you build this out, I'd love to keep tabs on what you guys are doing so that we can uh, we can watch this thing grow. And you, you know, I've already been in. I, you know, I, I think I witnessed an accident with you uh, over the weekend um, uh, on one of the videos that were uh, that were that up on your website. Um, so we will definitely follow up and see how things are going in, in your quest for investment as well, because these are good lessons. And I'd love to have you back on to have that conversation after you've closed a round and and you've reached a milestone in the number of downloads and. Uh, and you know you start uh, driving this thing uh, even more forward. Is that a, is that a good sound good? Absolutely, absolutely. It would be absolutely a pleasure to be back on here. Well, here. listen, I've been speaking with Arash Mahin, who is uh, who is from uh, squawkme.com. Squawkme.com. Go and take a look at this. Go download it from iTunes. Just do a search for Squawk Me, um, and uh, it'll pop right up, and you can use it. Interface is beautiful, very simple to use. You know, uh, it's uh, it's the way that it should be built, which is uh, point, click, shoot, upload, done, sign, sealed, delivered, uh, and uh, and you're broadcasting ultimately uh, up on the web. Um, and we will will follow up with uh, Arash as as this company grows and as he gets closer to financing and closes the deal. And you can hopefully we'll be able to impart some lessons on on how this happens. Um, Arash, thank you, man, for doing this. I really appreciate it. So Those proud are, that uh, this is being done in Ottawa. So congratulations, man. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me, Rob. Uh, and uh, for those guys out there in the audience, watching, listening, doing whatever you do while you're listening and watching this, really appreciate you paying uh, a little bit of attention to this. Um, near and dear to my heart, I really appreciate the fact that you guys are around and listening. Thank you so much. Keep the feedback coming. I love hearing it. Untether at gmail.com. So to you, I thank you. To Arash, I thank you. Good luck, man. And we'll hopefully have you back on uh, as things start to accelerate even more. Thank you.